Thank you for joining us on the program, website thisweekinamerica.us. Adina Pointer is certainly making entertainment, television, film, theater. She portrayed Letty Mae Thornton for all seven seasons of HBO's Cornerstone series, True Blood. She appeared as Kendra in Aaron Sorkin's HBO drama, The Newsroom. Other HBO series, Lackawanna Blues, Gia, long-running Mind of a Married Man. Adina can be seen as the fierce warrior Indra on the CW hit series, The 100. And as Pearly May in the new and highly acclaimed WGN American period drama, Underground. She joined the cast of the ABC new drama pilot, The Jury, as a season regular. Two seasons on American Dreams, guest starring roles on Grey's Anatomy, Glee, CSI, House MD, and Law and Order, Vampire Diaries, The Big Screen, seen in the social network and about Sunny, and extensive Broadway credits working with some of the country's best stage directors, starring on Broadway in The Women, numerous plays at the New York Shakespeare Festival, including an Obie winning performance in Venus. Adina Porter with us on This Week in America. Hi, Adina. Welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. It is our pleasure. So many things to talk about in all the productions that you have been in and currently in. I want to talk about one that's really getting a lot of critical notice, and that's on WGN America Underground, the the story of the uh, American underground movement. Talk about that and what impact that's had on you, because as I understand, you actually recorded this, filming this, on an actual plantation in Louisiana that housed slaves at one time. Yes, in real slave quarters. So no one complained about the heat or mosquitoes or or anything. How dare we? Because everyone from the crew, the producers, the actors, all had this feeling that we were on hollow ground and if the wall could talk. So in lots of ways, sometimes I felt like I wasn't even acting, just kind of reacting and, and just wanting to be... Um, respectful for the souls that um, that had been here before. I was going to say, are the ghosts of the past still there? Can you can you sort of feel their presence? You can see it. I mean, in in some of the, I, many of us, and I and I remember me being one of them too. Just would sit in the say in, in a slave shack, and and you're looking at the walls, and there were marks on some walls. And then your imagination goes, and you wonder what those marks are about. Are those um, how much cotton you picked that day? Is that a secret math lesson? Is that uh, a secret reading lesson? Is that the last time you saw a loved one? Is that is is, is that the, the day to you when you were going to make your escape? Who knows? But, um, you know, real people lived there and lived their lives there and toiled there, and we just wanted to share their stories. And it was also interesting when we would go to the main house, which was, which was a real plantation, and we got a tour from the descendants of the people who used to own that plantation. And um, so it was the atmosphere. It was definitely in the air. Um, um, slavery um, being owned by people, um, it was in the air. It, producers, as they went into the series The Underground on WG in America, said they really didn't want another period piece. They wanted something fresh and vibrant. What's it like as an actress to be part of something that's not just entertainment, but here's something that's a, a very powerful message uh, for all of us, a very important show? Well, you know... I feel like, in many ways, I've had that opportunity before. Um, you know, when um, we're well, going back to underground, um, I've worked with the one of the executive producers and directors, uh, Anthony Hemingway, many times before on True Blood and on Newsroom. So I, I've seen his work. I knew that he was um, it is an amazing director, and it was going to be very very exciting. When you're doing the actual piece, because, you know, you're not hearing the music, you're not hearing what's added at the end. I mean, I'm, I'm blown away by the breath when you're hearing people breathing, you know, when they're running and how, how much that kind of motivates the drama. Um, you're, you're, you're just trying to tell the story. And um, the actors went to Comic-Con. The actors of Underground went to Comic Con, and I remember asking the executive producer, um, Misha Green, why Comic Con? 
And she said, because these are superheroes. And that was like a light bulb moment for me. Oh, yes. ah, okay. And then and then it was thinking of like the Great Escape, you know, that Steve McQueen movie. And and so that's when I thought about okay, we're not playing victims here. We are playing people who have a goal and it's time to get out and what can we do? Uh, so that's that was the that was always in the back of my mind. You're listening to This Week in America, our guest on the program, Adina Porter, uh, an actress in many, many programs, as we've talked about and we'll talk about on the show today. We're specifically now talking about a role in WGN, uh, the series. It's an excellent series. It's it's uh, still available, first season. And you talked about the music, uh, John Legend <laughs> responsible for the music. That's really part yeah. of the emotion of the show, isn't it? It's a, it's a very important part of it. Absolutely. Um, when I first auditioned for the piece, I auditioned for the role of Ernestine, which uh, she is in charge of uh, the servants who live in the house. Um, but they they really wanted to deal with that ugly part of history where um, blacks, light skin and dark skin and, and, and what we felt about each other. And so um, they asked me to come back in and audition for the role. Once they saw what I could do, they asked me to come back in and audition for the role of Pearlie Mae, but they asked if I could sing. And, you know, I'm not an entertainer. You know, I'm not like a triple threat where you can sing and dance and act. I just act. But, you know, I guess I can carry a tune. And so I, I went and got some coaching, um, and then I came in and I auditioned and I, and I sang. And it was because of the um, song, uh, Drinking Gorge, that was actually a hidden message about a, a, a map to freedom. And, and so um, it, it was lovely kind to go beyond one's comfort zone, <laughs> as an escaping yes. explain would have to do. <laughs> It's interesting as you explain your background and uh, and auditions and the current series, one of the current series you're on, and I, I don't know how you keep track of your schedule. You probably have somebody assigned just to keep track of your schedule to make sure you are where you're supposed to be at the right time. The 100, I understand, and you, you call yourself a working actress. The, what, the day you did that audition, you did, what, three or four others, and you weren't particularly fond of what you did for the 100, and, and you got the part. Yes, yes. And I found out that I got that part on the last day of filming Newsroom. So it was really nice to know when one job ended that I knew what my next job was going to be. I had to get on a plane the next day to go to Vancouver to start the, start the 100. Well, that's interesting because one show ends, the next day you're on a, a plane and, and you're on the set of another show. Newsroom has always been one of my favorite programs. And talk about when you're working on a, a, a program put together by Aaron Sorkin. I always thought I always thought you should get like double pay for that. If you've got to deliver that dialogue, there's got to be something in your contract somewhere where it's a little over and above what everybody else does. Talk about this, because as I'm listening with 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 the pacing, it's almost like a musical without the music, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And, and, and he talked about the musicality of the writing. And so that if he said, if he wrote cannot, it's cannot and not can't because of the musicality. Now, I did not have to deliver those mouthful, amazing <laughs> monologues that, yes. like Tom Fidelsky and Jeff Daniels uh, and Emily Mortimer. Um, my character, you know, I think about the newsroom like it being a stew. And, of course, Jeff and, and Sam Waterston, they're the meat, and, 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 Emily, and Emily Mortimer, they're the meat, potatoes, and the carrots. I'm like cumin, you know. I just kind of, what's that little spice you don't know about? So what, what was my job was when the monologues are going in, you only have one line and you have to hit it now. And you have to hit it on beat now. And that can be kind of terrifying because when you have a lot to say, you can kind of work up to it. You get a couple of takes yes. because, you know, you got a lot, you got a mouthful. But when you only got one line and you better not blow it. <laughs> yeah, because I'm sure thing. they're in their rhythm, too. And if you don't right. fit in there, it sort of throws the timing off for everybody. 
Exactly. You know, and then there's always this kind of fear of like, well, you could definitely be recast. <laughs> um, and uh, you were always invited to the rehearsals, and it was closed rehearsals, and it was whether you had one line or no lines at all, because the set was made of glass. And so I was also hired for my reaction. So you could, you know, the, the you could be hearing the monologue and then cut to Kendra and it was like, what is she thinking about what's being said? And so I very much appreciated the be, being a, a collaborator. And it felt like theater when you do an, an Aaron Sorkin show. You had rehearsal. Um, you, you better know your lines. And you got to all work together and felt like you were all creating something, whether you had one line or you had a thousand. Because you know what they say: uh, there's no such thing as there's no such thing as small roles, only small characters, well, or, it, or small actors, something like that. Well, yeah. Adina Porter is our guest on this week in America, talking about all of her work. We're talking about the newsroom now, the hit series for several years on HBO. It's interesting because people talk about acting and they think of words and how you deliver those words. And in talking about newsroom, I read one time when you said one of the production people came up, one of the producers, and liked the way you arched your eyebrows in reaction. <laughs> and you didn't even know you did it, but it's like, that's an important part of acting. It's like, whatever you did, do it again, because that really adds to the scene. It's yeah. all those other moves, moves, isn't it? I mean, it's not just words. It's all body language. Right. Well, especially when it's, it's television, when it's television yes. and film, because the camera's right there and you have to breathe and trust that what you're feeling is, is coming through. Unlike uh, theater, where you're allowed to be a lot bigger because you want the people in the cheap seats way in the back, you know, to be <laughs> able to also sense it. So when I first came into town from New York, um, a lot of L.A. casting agents would say to me, okay, let's bring it down, let's bring it down, because I was used to, you know, doing it for the house, and there's a whole new skill to learn to just do it and trust it for the camera that's only inches away. I would like to discuss theater. Time is going too quickly. Adina Porter, our guest on This Week in America. Her website is very simple, adinaporter.com. You can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on and see all the projects that she's involved in. I've never had anybody on the program before that's actually performed in Toni Morrison's living room. <laughs> Talk about that experience. I mean, you're in college and you're taking on what one of one of hers, what the, the bluest eye, you decide, I'm going to try yes. to get permission and perform this as my college yes. project. Suddenly you're in her living room with her son performing. What, what, would, what was that experience like? Well, you know, Toni Morrison, yes, she's a Nobel um, Prize winner and a Pulitzer Prize winner, but um, deep down inside, she's also a teacher. So two students contacted her and said, we love your book, and um, we would love to have permission just to be able to turn it into a one-woman show and, and perform it in New York. And she called us up. This was before texting and email and everything else. She called us up and said, come on to my house. Let, let, let me see what you got to do. Or what you want to do, and I performed it in her living room, and I just I felt so honored because it was like it was teachers and students. It was an older black woman and a younger black woman. It was a woman and a woman. It was um, a mother and and then me. I I wasn't a mother yet, but I was a young person, another human being, and and I think she was um, she appreciated that her work. Um, was, you know, resonating in us, and she gave us um, permission to do a limited run in New York City. Um, that was not, that was my first experience with Toni Morrison. Um, a few years later, after school, I um, had, um, I mean, after having graduated, um, I was asked to do a reading at the Public Theater of a play of hers that she wrote about, um, just went out of my head, the black young man who was killed for whistling uh, at a girl um, down Oh, yes, south. yes. I can't remember uh, the name I, either, but I, I know what I'm you're talking so about. I'm so sorry. Um, it just went out of my head. Anyway, um, I, I, uh, uh, George C. Wolfe uh, uh, 
George T. Wolfe directed the reading, and there were a whole bunch of other movers and shakers there, and I was just new in the business. Uh, I was so happy to be involved. We all went out to dinner afterwards. I didn't say a word to anybody because I didn't want to embarrass myself. Emmett Till. Emmett Till. Emmett Till, yes, of, thank you. Okay. I kept thinking James Meredith, and I knew that wasn't right, so you've got it. Emmett Very good. And, um, and so I just sat there just listening to all the stories and everything else, being so happy to be invited and included. And then I went home that night and was looking through my album to put something on. And then I, I went back to buy an album, and I realized that that was Nina Simone. I saw the album cover, wow. Nina Simone. I had been sitting across from Nina Simone just hours ago. But I, I, I didn't put it together. And, you know, you look one way when you're all dressed up in an album cover and when you're just wearing exactly, your regular yes. clothes and <laughs> so that was my experience, my second experience with Toni Morrison and Nina Simone. A couple minutes left to Dina Porter. We have to have you back. There are so many interesting things to talk about. I, I get the impression that theater is really where the roots are, obviously. That's where where you got started. What is it like? I, I mean, you go out there now and you, and you nail a scene that's wonderful. It's done. People can see it on television. They can see it uh, when they go to a movie theater. You go out and you nail it on stage, and you got to turn around and do it the next day, and maybe even later that day if it's a matinee yeah. that you're performing. What's that like? Because it has to be a, an adrenaline rush for each performance because it counts, and there are no retakes. Absolutely. That's exactly what it is, an, ad an adrenaline rush. I remember one actress saying to me, and now I, I said it to Shirley MacLaine. I did a movie with Shirley MacLaine about a month ago, and I used it when I left the trailer see you on the ice and um because anything can happen yes you got to be on your game and um i feel very lucky and blessed that my roots are in the theater because it makes television and film a little bit easier because you know hey you get a second chance yes exactly chance, the fourth chance you know and when i worked with david fincher you know 74 chances <laughs> um you know and so um but i'm very glad that i i i i got that um that muscle first because it it, it i feel it gives me a little bit more um permission to take chances um because i i know that I can hit it when I have to hit it. When I did um, when I did Venus, um, it was directed by oh my God, uh, these names are going out of my head. But he was an avant garde director, and I remember him coming up to us backstage, and he said, "Don't mess up the New York Times is out front." No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. There are some things you'd rather not know, I'm assuming, and read about it in the next day in the paper and not, uh, and, that usually, and not have to deal with that. Yes, usually they don't let you know when uh, <laughs> the New York Times, which is the most important that, reviewer, yes. is out front. But um, he, wanted, he wanted us on our game. And, but he, maybe he also just kind of wanted to see what we deal like under pressure. That, yes. And I guess I'm glad that I figured out under pressure that um, I wasn't going to throw away what I had learned and, um, and I was going to do what I could do. So um, it was a, a great lesson to, to have been thrown under the bus and got. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have had and are having such an illustrious career. Currently, as I mentioned, uh, you'll find uh, Adina in Underground on WGN America, The 100 on CW, working on a number of other projects, and would love to have you back in the program. This really has been fun. Thank you for being with us on the show. Thank you so much, and I'm going to be uh, joining um, Shonda Rhimes again. I get to be on The Catch, which is her new show on ABC, so I'm glad to go back to Chandra Land. How do you keep track of all this? Uh, I have a manager who tells me where I need to be, <laughs> but I, I have two children, a nine-year-old and a five-year-old, so I'm used to uh, schedules. Okay, so it's nothing new. It's like just handling the kids. It's just my career that I'm handling here. So. Yes, yes, yes. Handling the kids is a lot harder. <laughs> Dina Porter with us on This Week in America. Thank you for joining us. 
information Thank available. So at, it's been our pleasure. AdinaPorter.com is the website you're listening to This Week in America. Our website, thisweekinamerica.us.